welcome and you guys are going to learn how to create this scene I thought it was very satisfying and yeah you guys might want to learn it so if we look at the finished blender scene you can see this so uh, yeah the animation is quite simple I literally just appended all of these tubes here to a empty and rotate this empty around and then just it rotates and it uh, yeah it's quite pleasing to the eyes um, the light setup is quite easy this is a light in here this cone um, I have here here and here and also a light but I will go into that later and um, yeah we have just one background and that's it so let's actually start with a whole new blender file bam here we are and we first want to delete the default cube I like to add a plane and delete three of these vertices now we have one vertex here and we want to use a modifier on this so here into modifier properties add modifier and we're going to add a screw modifier so what does the screw modifier do well if we go up in the screw you can see that now this vertex is being duplicated in a circular fashion and then um, yeah we can screw it up let's say you can also change the amount of iterations so you can go up here as you can see you can still move the screw around even the angle and all that shebang we're not gonna play too much with this but with the screw and the iterations we can um, yeah change them the screw the size of the screw is actually quite important because if we look back at our render it will determine the thickness of these tubes so if you have very small ones that can also work or if you want thicker ones you can just change the screw in here how do you know if you get like fatter or thinner of these tubes well what you're gonna do later on we'll just grab a um, little cylinder gonna scale it down and what you want to do is you want to scale it till both these ends like so the bottom is gonna be here and the top is going to be at the other point so around here and now because there are going to be four of these tubes you want to scale it by 2.5 so 0 0.25 so scale 0 0.25 and now this essentially this size we can fit four times in here so if you like this size then you should keep this amount if you don't really like it and you want them to be bigger you should put the screw size up and maybe use a little bit uh, less iterations you don't have to really make a decision on this yet because first we are going to add a cone okay so go make sure in the middle then mesh add a cone this cone we're gonna move it up so GZ1 so it matches up with this X axis here and now I'm going to move this up GZ1 so now our cone is the three of these blender units up okay so now we're going to select the screw modifier add a new modifier and this modifier is going to be the shrink wrap modifier as target we're going to select the cone so it seems like it's gone but if we hide the cone right now you can see that here our screw modifier is actually just shrink wrapped on top of this cone so now you can still change the screw to whatever you would like um, I maybe put it at point 0.9 something like that or point 0.85 but I think this is quite good what we have right here if you're happy with this you can go to object and convert this to a curve so convert curve from mesh bam the modifiers will automatically be accepted and now we have a curve okay so if you go into top you can see that um, it actually follows this curve here we have these arrows and this is the curve very very easy very simple and for this curve we actually have another tab here the object data properties of the curve can go into geometry and change from the bevel the depth so this essentially makes it thicker and yeah that is kind of how you get this full look this just makes a nice tube right so how thick can we make this tube well you can do it two ways you can do it how i showed you first with putting a cube in there and then match this up with it or you can just duplicate this rotate set 90 degrees you can see how much of a spacing is in between these so 
This is still a little bit too much, so I might put the depth a bit more up. Delete the second one and do this over with it set 90 degrees. Um, and now it's getting closer and closer, so I would even make it a bit bigger. Like, this is just playing around with it a little bit, just, you know, sometimes that is easier than thinking about it too much. <laughs> so, once you kind of know the size of these and you're happy with it, you want to delete... You want to keep one of them, so I will delete the other one. Why do I do this? Because I want to make this straight part here. Right now we don't have that yet, but it is quite easy. And we're gonna select this part, the last vertex, extrude it, so E and then Z. And now what you want to do is we want to rotate this. Because you can see here that it is rotated a little bit, right? Um, how do we do this? Well, you might want to start with the R, but you can see that it doesn't really move. So what I want to do is I want to make sure my 3D cursor is in the middle. So Shift C and I will just jump in the middle. And I'm going to make sure my transform pivot point is at 3D cursor instead of the median point. So 3D cursor. Now if you go in the top, you can see what it's actually doing. If I now rotate this around the z-axis, you can see that it rotates around this 3D cursor. So rotate it a little bit, doesn't have to be too much. And if you're happy with this, you want to select both of these vertices, click on W and subdivide it. Um, let's do it a few times, like three or four. And here we have some subdivisions in here. They're kind of the same length that it has around it, like anyways, so you want to kind of keep that into mind. And for this last point, I'm just going to move a bit up so we get a more of a smooth fall off instead of this very sharp one that we had before. So what I like to do here as well, make sure I give it a shade smooth. So with W, shade smooth, I like to add an extra subdivision surface with maybe the viewport set at 2. Awesome. So now we can duplicate this over and over. So Shift D, rotate Z 90 degrees. Shift D, rotate Z 90, and another time Shift D, rotate Z 90. And here we have multiple of these amazing little tubes. So, with the 3D cursor in the middle, we are going to add an empty plane axis, and I want you to select all of these tubes. Then, as last, we are going to select this empty, click on Ctrl P, and then set parent to object. So now all of these tubes are parented to this empty. The only thing we have to do with the animation is we have to rotate this around the z-axis. My animation ends at 120 frames, so 120. And to set a keyframe, I like to click on I and then just do rotation. Then at 120 frames, I want to rotate this for 360 degrees, so 360, I, rotation. So now you can see that it will just rotate. The problem with this is you will see that it's quite slow in the beginning and the end and starts to speed up around frame 60. Right? We don't want that. We want it to be continuous. Because if we make a GIF out of this or whatever, you have just a continuous satisfying loop. So how do we do this? It is super, super simple. Let's very quickly go to animation. And instead of having this in the viewport editor type, I'm going to change this to graph editor. And now you want to select your curve here, which has been animated. Click here. And we want to change this from interpolation mode Bezier to linear. So now we have a linear interpolation mode. And now if you play it, you will see that it is always constant. There is one very small little thing we need to change. And that is, in zero, we are at a rotation of zero degrees. At 120, we are at 360 degrees. But zero and 360 degrees are both the same. So in these two frames, it essentially stops for a little bit because those are at the same rotation. So what I like to do is I like to change my end at 119 instead of 120 because then we don't have two of the same frames in here which makes it look like it stops a little bit it is very very small but yeah i like to change that so now it's very smooth awesome 
So, let's get to rendering. Um, it's quite simple to render this. I didn't do too much of it. What I like to do is with my camera, go to the front. So I like just to go here into view, lock camera to view. So just move it around. Um, I think around here, something here would look good. Turn lock camera to view off and I like to put the camera in a better position. So select your camera. It's gonna be zero. Um, rotation 90, zero. Just clean off these up a little bit, zero, zero. It's going to be up and here we are straight in front so um, you can render it like this there is a lot of empty space here you can of course also just go to here your output properties and change the resolution to to more of a portrait style um, but that is totally up to you I'm gonna do it for this right now and we're gonna use a nice background so I'm just gonna use a plane rotate it Move it backwards, scale it up. Oh yeah, our um, pivot point, I'm gonna move back to median here. And then we have a nice background. So the materials are going to be quite simple. Just go to shading. I am going to select this uh, yeah, background, click on new. I just deleted the principal shader and added a diffuse shader here. And this diffuse shader has this hex code. You don't have to copy it. Please try some other colors, but I know some of you people really want to copy everything. So yeah, that's the hex code. And um, yeah, that's easy. Now we can go on to this material. This is going to be a little bit harder, but it's still going to be quite, quite simple. So click on new. And I'm not even sure what to call this, jelly or rubber. But let's do jelly. And then orange. So now I like to put my principal shader backwards because I know I'm gonna put some extra notes in between here. Here I want to change my base color. So it's gonna be this hex code. It's just gonna be an orange. Don't be too worked up about it. Then roughness at 0.4. And I like to put the transmission up. 0.98 worked for me. Now, I like to add a mix shader here, and here I put a translucent PSDF into the other part of the mix shader. This translucent is going to be this color, but then I like to play a little bit around with the hue and saturation. So put a bit more to yellow and then a bit less saturated. That's totally up to you, of course. You can also put it a bit more bright. Or this one a little bit darker, but yeah, that's totally up to you. I don't want this translucency to be too overpowered, so I put this fact at 0.2. Now we can check it here with a few pot shading. The problem is we are inside EV. I personally like to render with cycles, so I go to cycles. And yeah, we have a material. It's quite hard to see because we don't really have a light in here. So how do we do this? I personally just selected the cone. And this cone is going to be my lighting. So I'm going to click on new on the cone. Let me actually hide everything. New. Principal shader is going to be deleted in here. I'm just going to add an emission node. Emission goes into the surface. And we can put the strength a little bit up. I like to give this a shade smooth. And we also have to put the cone a little bit down here. Just this top vertex because I don't want to see it in my render here. Right, so I only want to light up the inside of these uh, jelly bits. So let's look how that actually looks. And here you can see that we get some awesome lighting in here. It is a bit too much in my opinion, but you can see what the material is doing. So you can just select a cone. You can change the strength to whatever works for you. Just play around with it a little bit. But that is kind of how I did this kind of um, yeah, lighting. And now I can also see the material a little bit more. I am liking what I'm seeing. But the one thing that we saw in our render is that we also had a few of those small little specks. You can see the specks here, those little glitters. So we're going to make some glitters as well. It is actually very, very simple, but this is a fun technique. So um, I like to just disconnect this mix shader and just add a diffuse shader just so we can see what we are doing. So this diffuse goes to the surface and then we are going to add a 
Voronoi, or whatever, Voronoi texture. And this distance is going into the color of the diffuse. And we want to make sure the scale goes a little bit up. But you can see what we are getting right here. So let's put it at uh, 200,000 for right now. And you can see that we have, um, yeah, kind of specs, but it's not really as defined as we want. So I'm going to put a color ramp in between here, color ramp. And I'm going to move these a bit more close to each other. And you can see that we are getting the specs. Um, I personally like to do it the other way around, just so I, yeah, for some reason with white, I can see it a bit better. Um, and the more you put it to the left, the smaller and less specs you're getting. You can see here, the more you put them to the right, you get a bit of these bigger uh, glitters. Glitters or specs, I'm not sure what to call them yet. Let's call them glitters, actually. So, um, yeah, I'm quite happy with this. I might, oh, put the white to the left. Yeah, this. And what I like to do is I will make sure these glitters are actually very shiny. So I'm adding a glossy node in here. Glossy goes down here. Then... Instead of this diffuse, we are going to add another mix shader. Mix shader. We're going to add this whole shader. And then add a glossy. Now you will see that it probably looks quite weird. Right? But if we're going to add this color ramp and this photo noir texture into the fact, you will see that they will get separated. So the white will only show this glossy parts and the black of the color ramp will show this shader. So here we have our little specs. Very, very nice. So jelly orange, um, you can essentially give two of these the jelly orange material. And for these other ones, I like to select also the jelly orange, but I like to click on here. So you duplicate your material and this is just going to be jelly red or whatever color you choose. And then you just change the base color. This is going to be a bit more red. Also, the translucency is going to be a bit more orangey. And here you can see that we can give these two the jelly red. And here's essentially what we want to create. So now, if you play your animation, here, timeline, you can see that we are rotating everything as it should be. And we have our materials. For the lighting itself, I literally just did um, yeah, a light here, a light here, a light here. Light here, play a little bit with these lights. They, Of course, every light has to make sense in your scene. Otherwise, you're just playing around with randomness. You don't really want to copy me. You want to look at the light and see what it does. Um, but I don't think I have to go in too much into detail into that. But this is how we created it. I would love to see some of your randomness. I would love to see what you did. Maybe you used way different materials. Um, yeah, I'm just very excited. I hope you guys learned something from this. If there are any questions, comment down below. And that's it. See you guys.